From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello there, and welcome to another podcast with me, Roger, and today, my guest, John. Hello, John. Hi, Roger. Good to see you. Now, John, you're from the USA, but I think you spent time in Britain. Yeah, you know, it's funny, Roger. We were talking on the last podcast about differences between American and British English, and I, I did spend a lot of time in the UK. And one of the most interesting examples of the differences that I came across was when I was walking down the hall one day at a university, and one of the professors there said, would you mind popping along to my surgery later on? And I thought to myself, coming to your surgery? He says, what's wrong with me? I, I, I don't need an operation. I'm, <laughs> my spleen isn't hanging out. And this in, the, in a hall of a university. What did he mean there, Roger? Um, surgery is, um, well, that means the time when he is available in his office for you to meet with him. To, to meet, just to meet, not, yeah. to ha not to do a major operation. Oh, no, no, no. He's probably not a medic at all. Uh, oh, right. Oh, so, you know, he may be a doctor, but a ph philosophical yeah. doctor. Anyway, yeah. so it, surgery is... It's what a German would call Sprechstunde. Okay, office hours, we Americans would yes, call it. That's okay, right. yeah. all right, got it, got it. Well, that's, I mean, to me, that was a real mind opener, a mind bending mm -hmm. entree, if you will, <laughs> to be told about surgery in this context. But well, it probably started with doctors in Britain calling their place, their office, the surgery, come to the surgery. And that got mm -hmm. taken over by people working on campus and also by our members of parliament. They use the same term. Ah, if you, right. If you check the website of any member of the House of Commons, you'll find surgery hours. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I would never have guessed. Yeah. Never would have guessed. Well, we do, and there are some other ones, though, as well. I mean, uh, when I was in the UK, I wanted to cross the street, and there was a sign saying, Subway. And I thought to myself, uh, okay, is this where I go down and take the train? Ah, and it, it yeah. does this, and then I, and as I went down, I discovered it was an underground passageway just to get to the other side of the street. That's right. But for us, growing up in New York or Chicago, a subway is the train you take that runs under the ground. That's the underground. The, the, what You guys call it the underground. Of, or, of course, of course. Yeah. In London, you say the underground. Or in London, they may even say the tube. The tube. Take the tube. Take the tube. And why do they call it the tube? Well, it's kind of... In a tube, in a pipe. Oh, in a pipe. Okay, because for us, a tube, if you think about YouTube, for example, yeah. is, a, is a television. So we're uh, going to watch yes. the tube, going to watch the boob tube, if it's stupid television. So for us, the tube is, 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 is about what you call telly, I think. <laughs> yes. Coming back to the subway, what if I said to you, some of those places are rather dark. Why not take a torch with you? I would say, are you out of your mind, man? You're going to send me straight into surgery with that. You, it's like, well, uh, torches, like, for me, would be like a flamethrower or something. What, oh, what are we no. going to do? Are we going to burn somebody down or something? I'm thinking about a little thing you hold in your hand that has batteries and gives you light. Roger, you're talking about a flashlight. If you say so. Now, of course I say so. I mean, <laughs> come on, this is simple stuff. If you just want to see what's going on out there in the dark, you turn on, you turn on your flashlight. Uh -huh. But you... You use a torch. I do, yeah. Okay, well, I'll remember that the next time I go out with you. I'm sure it's very bright, your torches. <laughs> <laughs> and what if I said to you, would you like a fag? Then I would probably hit you in the face, Roger. Oh. Yeah, of course I would hit you in the face. If you say walk up to someone in New York and said uh, something like that, they th would think you'd call them a homosexual. A fag to us is a homosexual. Ah. Faggot, or is a, it's a homosexual. Yeah, so a very impolite term, in fact. That's putting it mildly, Roger. <laughs> but but to you, a, a fag is... It's a cigarette. It's just to light up a fag yeah. or light up a cigarette. I mean, I'm not a smoker, but if I were, I could say to you, have a fag. Well, that, that's, that's really unusual, and I'm very enlightened, Roger. But as I said, I warn you, don't say that in the streets of New York or Chicago. The, the word fag is an impolite term and will very rapidly be misinterpreted. Oh. Well... Thank you for not hitting me today, John. And You're thank welcome. you for being here. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot, Raj. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. You talking to me, Roger? I certainly am.